Chief and the Bombay Orthopedic Society and I O eight on twenty twenty. So I think uh, uh, I'm audible. Is it? Yeah, you are audible. You are visible. Please. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the popliteal sling reconstruction. Probably this is uh, not as popular as uh, any sort of arthroscopic ACL reconstruction or PCL fixation. But I think there is a place for uh, popliteal sling reconstruction as well. So before going into the video, I would like to uh, give you a little bit idea okay. regarding when I actually do the popliteal sling reconstruction. That's okay. Okay. So I think uh, this is a uh, just to give you uh, indications of uh, popliteal sling reconstruction. I think this is just an example. A 34-year-old male had a six-month back trauma and he had a difficulty in work. Uh, walking and uh, has complaints of subtle instability and on examination the posterior drawer was grade 3 and it was soft end point and this is the MRI if you can see that probably the, it looks that the PCL has already looks in, in this counter but we know that the, uh, the MRI is not very reliable in chronic PCL situation where the PCL usually tends to heal but heal in elongated position so in these sort of uh, situations it's uh, very important to do a stress radiograph to exactly determine whether the PCL is uh, uh, what is the grade of the PCL injury. It will be found that uh, there's so much of posterior translation in this sort of uh, situation, like I found in this patient. It's sure that this patient had a grade 3 injury. That means, in addition to PCL, some sort of PLC, postural coronary injury, is also there. <clears throat> and in diabetes, also, there is an extern excessive extraversion at 30 degree as well as a 90 degree. But uh, if you consider the postural corner as uh, most of us usually treat the uh, postural corner as a single structure. That means whenever we diagnose that postural corner is torn, we usually reconstruct the entire postural uh, corner. But sometimes you need to do the component re repair as well, like the LCL alone or the popliteal sling alone. If you look into the actual uh, classification of the, by the family which, who has classified the postural corner into uh, three types, where in type A, if there is only uh, increase in external return of tibia, then probably popliteus and popliteal fibular ligament is only torn. And in on type B, in addition to that, if you have slight varus laxity, then your LCL is also gone. In uh, type C, where severe varus laxity, where in addition to the uh, all the three uh, postural ligament, you have the cruciate ligament injury as well. So, in subset A, where you have uh, the I mean, only 10 degree in, increase in external rotation, you probably uh, have an in, intact LCL. These are the in, uh, subset of patients where you probably need to do popliteal sling reconstruction. And in addition, if you need into the various stress, I mean, uh, there are a lot of controversies regarding the uh, diagnosis of LCL injury. I think uh, with Leopard's uh, I mean, uh, classification, I think it's very easy to diagnose this uh, LCL injury. If the uh, opening as compared to the normal side is less than 2.7 millimeter, probably it's norm, uh, uh, normal or minor strain. 2.7 to 4 is complete LCL tear. If it is more than 4 millimeter, it's a complete postulatal injury. This is an example of the patient. I think uh, under anesthesia, if you uh, think that this much of opening is abnormal, probably you need to look into the normal side as well. And if you think that both the sides are opening equally, probably the LCL is intact. So my indications of popliteal sitting reconstruction are those where there is no LCL or any popliteal is torn along with the posterior drawer test grade 3 positive. I usually do the PCL and the popliteal uh, sling reconstruction. So, uh, in, in those with the PCL with the dial positive where the rotational uh, activity is uh, there and those with grade 3 PCL where the only uh, some sort of horizontal component of the PLC is done, I usually do the PCL along with the popliteal sling reconstruction. I escape the complete uh, reconstruction of the postulateral corner. So, this is the same, same patient. What I did was uh, PCL reconstruction along with the popliteal sling reconstruction as you can see from the tunnels. So the post portals required for the popliteal sling reconstruction is actually the and in addition to the uh, usual anterolateral, antero uh, medial, and postero medial, and postolateral, you need to do a transept. Uh, you need to dissect the septa as well to visualize from the postolateral to postero medial uh, part as well. So I think this part is actually common to uh, all the PCL reconstruction, or the where the Sonanda Samantha has already shown. But I think I do uh, extra in that sense that I usually. 
uh, do intercruciate, uh, I mean, interval dissection as well as a transeptal portal and do the postromedial uh, portal and the postrolateral portal. So many of the uh, people use, for doing the PCL reconstruction also do the transeptal technique. So that is remains same in uh, PCL reconstruction through the transeptal uh, technique. So as you can see, the uh, floppy ACL, and then you need to de develop your intercruciate interval. And you need to reset the fat and to go into the uh, septal part of it. And once you uh, reset the septal part, then you you can see from the septum medial corner, then you need to reset a little bit of uh, fat on the medial, uh, between the femoral, medial femoral condyle and the PCL to pass your instrument easily between the medial femoral condyle and the PCL. Then you pass your scope between the uh, medial femoral condyle and PCL to make the postro medial uh, portal. As you can see here, we can see the postro medial uh, condyle very nicely, which has already been uh, shown by Dr. Jagdish as well and Dr. Salundi Samantha as well. So we can see here the postro medial uh, I mean, uh, portal is made. And once that is it, you pass a cannula. And then you start dissecting from uh, the postromedial corner. The septal septum need to be resected, as you can see here. You need to cut the septum just behind the PCL to see through the septum on the anterolateral part. As you can see here, through the septum, you can visualize it. You need to be gentle here because the vessels lies very close to it. So uh, once you cut the septum, it has been said that the vessels also move uh, quite posteriorly. So the chances of injury to the vessels also decreases with the, uh, I mean, once you remove the septum. Then you need to come to the anterolateral, uh, um, uh, through, through the anterolateral portal, you need to look at the posterolateral corner. As you can see, a posterolateral corner can be easily visualized. The passing your scope between the ACL and the lateral femoral condyle. And then you need to make a... Uh, Postrolateral corner foot, as you can see here, it is made usually above your biceps and just posterior to your fibular head. And you can pass your switching stick, and then you by this way you can complete your, I mean, transeptal portal as well, so that you can visualize from the postromedial corner and pass it directly to the postrolateral corner, as you can see here. The scope is in the postural corner and you can see the in, entire posterior part. Now I am coming to the uh, popliteal sling reconstruction. This is another patient where the popliteal uh, is sling is uh, reconstructed. And now my uh, scope is actually in in postromedial corner uh, port and then I am visualizing through the transeptal portal into the postural corner and the postural port is being made here. Once the postural port is being made, then you need to pass your uh, favor to resect the minuscule tibial ligament a little bit from the posterior part so that you can resect the popliteus tendon very nicely and you can elevate the popliteus tendon very nicely. As you can see here, as you can see here, popliteus tendon is visualized here, meniscus is there, you need to cut this part of the meniscus tibial ligament so that you can lift your popliteus tendon very nicely and see the muscular tendon jun junction of popliteus tendon. As you can see here, and then your, uh, I mean, PCL jig should come from the anterolateral portal and you pass between the, your lateral femoral condyle and ACL. And you need to lift the popliteus at the level of muscular tendon junction to find the popliteal groove on the tibia. And it is at this groove you need to make a tunnel for the popliteal sling. As you can see here, this is the groove. You lift it with your jig, PCL jig, and make a tunnel here around 10 millimeter down the joint line at the level of popliteal groove. As you can see here, this is the most crucial point, I think, because the vessels lies very close to it. So you need to be very careful while drilling through it. And once you pass, uh, make a 4 mm drill bit and drill a uh, dilution of tunnel and pass a suture to it and retrieve it through the postural lateral corner. Once you do that, then you take your scope to the anterolateral, uh, I mean, portal and 
you need to visualize from the antenatal food portal and then you need to make uh, visualize your uh, popliteus tendon attachment on the femoral side i think this is just by seeing the probing the your popliteus you can reach to the uh, popliteus tendon in just another femoral side and at the same level you need to um, uh, make an port outside which is usually just anterior to your lateral collateral ligament and then you need to drill uh, at the site of attachment of the popliteus and the femur and then you need to dilate it with your <coughs> 4mm drill and uh, usually 7mm drill is also done and then you need to retrieve all the two sutures through that accessory lateral portal and then as you can, you, the sutures are being re retrieved through the accessory lateral portal for the sutures and then you need to pass the sutures through that portal to the uh, femoral side as well as you know, the, on the tibial side then on the tibial uh, femoral side you need to pass the interference guide wire and usually uh, put a interference screw there on the femoral side and once you put the interference screw on the femoral side you need to tighten the uh, tibial side as well and and you need to tighten the graft at the level of i mean around 70 degree flexion and in uh, neutral rotation not fully internal rotation or external rotation and you need to uh, tighten that after uh, you finish your PCL reconstruction and then you need to fix the TBL side as well uh, by using a endo button or an interference screw. I think one technical problem is we need to be careful about the peroneal nerve which is on the posterior lateral part. So your uh, port should be just above the biceps and that's posterior to the LCL just above the fibula. Here your posterior lateral port should be and in this way you can easily avoid the common peroneal nerve which lies below the biceps and to be careful about uh, if you are uh, drilling it through the anterolateral part very nicely uh, you probably have the higher chance of your <coughs> uh, hitting the vessels so it will be better if you um, direct it from the anteromedial part to the posterolateral part in that way chances of damage to your uh, vessels are less this is the same patient after about uh, three years of follow-up as you can see here I mean, uh, this is the posterior drawer test. I think you can easily see that there is a very nice firm endpoint to the posterior. Although slight laxity is there, but that is also uh, there on the no his normal side as well, as you can see here. Okay. So I think um, if you uh, examine this patient, uh, as you can see here, there is a large opening on the lateral collateral, but if you see in the affected side as well, this is same. So I think uh, to conclude, I think popliteal sling reconstruction does have some indications because few subset of PLC injury actually escape the LCL injury. In those cases, you can do popliteal sling reconstruction and anatomical PCL is for those where the various instability as well as dial test positive is both there. But uh, since the uh, PCL and popliteal sling reconstruction can be done Arthroscopy it has a lesser morbidity for those patients where the LCL is not injured. I would like to advocate uh, arthroscopic PCL as well as popliteal reconstruction in those sort of situations. Thank you. Mm -hmm.